Vartan, you are listening to me on Cricket On Air on Radio Desi Beat. Enjoy the cricket segment. Hi, this is Colin Miller. You're listening to me on Cricket On Air. I hope you enjoy the cricket entertainment. Hello and welcome to Cricket On Air, a show that goes beyond cricket news and analysis and brings cricket closer to real life. I'm your host Shree and together with my friends Himanshu and Deepika, we'll be taking you all on a fun-filled ride of cricket. Most of us love the entertainment part of cricket. Whether we like it or not, each of us definitely remembers at least one nail-biting finish of an exciting, exciting cricket man. And what remains with us from such cricketing moments are the stories. Stories of how cricketers were made, how strategies were devised and how matches were won. We often relate these stories with our daily lives. I'm sure you all have such stories to tell as well. So let us share these exciting stories right here on Cricket On Air. On the show today, we'll have our hilarious segment cracking up. This time around, we are going to put Himanshu on the spot. Sure, ready when you are, guys. All right, Manchu, why are you having that smile on your face? Just wipe that smile off your face. Shree said that he's going to put you on the spot, not on the spotlight. Okay. So first question, when a batsman gets out without scoring any runs, why do they say he got out on a duck? This one is right up my alley, Deepika. Or let's just say you just gave me a half volley. It's code for what they have to do, that is duck if they get showered by rotten eggs by the crowd for their awful performance. <laughs> you know Himanshu, this, this dashing dynamic heartthrob that Mahindra Singh Dhoni is has had quite a life. You bet. Glitz, glamour, fame, money, you name it. However, let's not forget, before all this fame and fortune, there was years and years of hard work and determination. Absolutely. I'm sure nothing comes for free and you know, no pain, no gain. So the story of a small town ambitious cricketer and that's why we call it That's, that's the Way Martin Way. Tony's school teachers recall that he was an average student in class, but he was a complete sports addict. The moment there was some free time in the class, Tony would be the first one to run to the ground. He did not just play, he excelled in whatever sports he played. Story goes that while he was focusing on growing his career in cricket, he also took up a job in Indian Railways. He was a ticket collector at Kharagpur Railway Station. Tony and a couple of his friends actually covered themselves in white bed sheets and walked around <laughs> the complex late in the night. And So you can see he had a mischievous side to himself. He was taking care of his responsibilities. He was an ambitious cricketer, but there he was having fun. And I think that's very important. People who are actually having fun and doing what they do actually excel in their life. After successful first class seasons in 2003 and 2004, Dhoni was picked to play for an India A tour of Zimbabwe and Kenya. Boy, he must have seen some tigers then. These performances caught the attention of the selectors and also the then Indian captain, sort of Ganguly. But you know what? When he accomplished certain goals in the world of cricket, what came along with that were some lucrative endorsements. That means money, 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 money. style of aggressive batting and his down-to-earth personality and his fairy tale story of a small town boy making it big gave him unparalleled fame. It really appealed to the Indian masses. It said that if you work hard, you'll be amazed at how much more luck you start getting to have. You are right. So maybe this is one such thing that the harder I work, the luckier I get. The harder I work, yes, the luckier I've heard I get. Of that. I have heard, I've heard that. We will agree that you know what is really needed is the will to work hard and determination. So here's wishing the Ranchi Rocker even, even more, more success and happiness in the days to come. Welcome back friends, you are listening to the World Cup story on Cricket On Air. Let's move to the second World Cup in 1979. The second World Cup was played in the aftermath of the Kerry Packer series. We'll cover the Kerry Packer series also in our episode on cricket controversies. Like we had this entire episode of Sumanil Gavaskar taking over the first ever World Cup match. Did anyone pull a Gavaskar in the second World Cup this time around? Oh Himanshu? God. Himanshu, come up. Come up, Himanshu. You're, I know you've, you've <laughs> gone the, down under the... Under the table again? again? Uh, yeah, please dude, come up. Dude, they're not helping my case here. 
So it seems the whole Indian team pulled the Gavaskar in the second World Cup series. And besides that, West Indies won the 1979 World Cup again. Second time in a row. Second time in a row. Was Clive Lloyd the captain this time again? Yes, yes he right. was. Yes, oh yes, my yes, God. Yes, Welcome back friends. I'm Deepika and on Cricket On Air today, we're going to tell you how money makes the world go round. The 1992 World Cup was played in Australia and New Zealand. Coloured clothing, floodlights, white balls and rules in favour of the batsmen meant this was tournament completely designed for a cricket fan. In 1992, there was, there was something else that was also happening along the same lines. Teams had started experimenting with both batting and bowling strategies. So out came the big hitting Ian Botham to open the batting for England with the expectation that he would score quickly and put pressure on the opposition teams. The English were not the only ones with different ideas, Shri. Uh -huh. New Zealand did their own thing by opening their bowling with a spinner, Deepak Patel. First time ever. And South Africa had the charming and handsome Jaunty Rhodes taking even more charming catches. In the final, Pakistan were totally on fire and defeated England comfortably to win their first ever World Cup. The legend and also another handsome man, Imran Khan, who had quit cricket much before 1992 World Cup, led his team on to win the trophy, gladiator style. I'm sure that he must have been really happy that he came back to cricket and got the final World Cup. You bet. There was one more reason why he came back to cricket, Deepika. Imran Khan was trying to raise funds for a cancer hospital that he was trying to build in memory of his late mother. And Imran Khan was using this tournament to raise these funds for this cancer hospital. So there was always this buzz about cancer awareness and there was always this social cause that was associated with cricket in this World Cup. Welcome back folks. You are listening to the story of sledging or intimidation on Cricket On Air. Friends, cricket has always been termed a gentleman's game. However, everybody on the field, including captains, players, bowlers, batsmen and fielders, have always tried to take that extra step to make sure that they get into the head of the other person. Yeah, and you know, some people call it sledging, some call it intimidation, uh, some fancy people call it friendly banter. <laughs> yeah, right, friendly banter. <laughs> the Australians call it mental disintegration. This topic may have gained some popularity in the recent times thanks to some awesome TV coverage with the cameras really zooming in onto the players and some amazing stump microphones which, which can pick up what the players are actually saying onto the field. But sledging has been in business for a long, long time. And I have an example for you. The West Indian batsman Viv Richards was notorious for punishing bowlers that dare to sledge him. So in one of the matches, a bowler attempted to sledge him after he had played and missed at several balls in a row. The bowler turned to Viv and said, It's red, round and weighs about 5 ounces, in case you were wondering. Richards hammered the next delivery out of the ground into a nearby river. Turning to the bowler, he commented, You know what it looks like, now go and find it. Before we sign off, I want to ask Shri and Imanchu a question. So what is your take on this World Cup? Who do you think will win? Guys, my money is on India and England. India because this is the most well-balanced team that I have ever seen on the of, of the Indian side. And on England because Kevin Peterson is my man and they are sending him to open the innings from now on. That's an interesting one. Maybe he could do something like what Ian Botham did in 1992. But my money is on South Africa, Himanshu. They've always been unlucky in the World Cups and I think this is going to be their time. They have great batting, great bowling. I mean, Dale Stain and Monet Morkel are probably the best opening pair in the world. On Indian pitches? Well, you never know. <laughs> great pace can always be a deterrent to batsmen. So it's, it's going to be something interesting. So I think my money is going to be on South Africa. Let's All see right. who wins. I think Australia and Pakistan have some new blood and it's almost a new team. They are highly unpredictable. I see that they could do something special as well. Alright, let's see what happens guys. So All we'd love to hear your opinions and who will win the World Cup. So let us know your ideas through our Facebook fan page on facebook.com slash cricket on air. We had an absolute blast bringing this show to you. Please go like our Facebook page on facebook.com slash cricket on air. That's the place we'll be sharing some exciting photos, videos and also actual shows that we air. Send us your feedback to feedback at cricketonair.com. And we'll also put some of the YouTube videos for the ones that we shared, right Shri? Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Alright guys, we'll be back with another exciting episode of Cricket on Air. Same time next week right here on Cricket on Air. 
So until next week, this is Himanshu, Sri, and Deepika signing off.